In this video you will learn such library which is called Jetai and it can help you tremendously with state management inside React. And actually if we are talking about React, typically you will use your state or use reducer inside your components. And in 90% of the cases you are using just your state. This is totally fine, but this is just a local state. You can't share it between your components. Actually, you can by using parent and child communication, but it is not that efficient when you have lots of different levels of your components, which actually means you want some global state. In this case, typically you want to use React context, and you simply throw your state inside React context and you share it everywhere. But the main problem is that all your components will be re-rendered with every single change of the state inside your React context. And then you start to create new and new context, and then you have lots of re-renders, and this is not that easy to support. At this moment you might think, okay, maybe I will just take Redux and implement everything with Redux with one single global store. This is totally fine, you can do that, but with Redux you will write lots of code. So you must understand that Redux is a big but super scalable solution that you might want to use for some projects. But there is another way. How we can share our state without usage of Redux and without problems with providers. And as you can see here, I opened the GitHub of the library which is called Jatai. The main idea is that it is super simple. This is just a replacement of use state. As you can see here, the main idea is that we simply create an atom like a state inside React. And then everywhere we're just using the hook use atom and inside we're providing some atom. So essentially this single liner is exactly the same like using of your state, but you can use it with Jatai out of the box inside any component. You don't need to implement React context, you don't need to manage your providers, and you don't need to think about your renders too much. As you can see here, I already have a small React application where we're rendering the list of our users. And we have two different routes, users and popular users, and you will understand why in a second. The main idea is that we want to try and implement inside our application Jotai. So what we want to do is just jump inside console and install this package, so npm install Jotai. Our next step will be to jump at some place where we can define our state that we need. And at this moment we want to talk about what state do you need at all. Because essentially in your applications you have two different types of states. You either have a server state, like you are fetching some data from the API and you just synchronize this data with your component, or you have some client data, like for example your theme or maybe client filters. And the main idea that Jotai implements the client state, which actually means all properties that we are simply creating inside JavaScript and we don't use server APIs for that. This is why let's say that inside our application we need the client state for theme. This is why here what we want to do inside our app.js we want to import Atom from Jotai. And after this here we can simply create a new const property which will be an Atom. In our case it is theme Atom. And here we are using Atom and we are providing some default value. For example it is a light theme. With this line we are creating our state and we can reuse this state across all components without any providers or passing this value from top to bottom. This is why here we can jump directly for example in our users GS6 and here let's get our theme. And for this we must import first of all use atom and this is exactly the hook that we can use in order to get the state. So here we can simply get our theme just like we are using use state hook. But here instead we want to use use atom hook and provide inside our atom that we created and it was theme atom. And as you can see it was auto imported from our app component. Now here inside our markup we can simply render our theme just inside div for example. So our theme is and here is our theme. Let's check if it's working. As you can see in browser we are getting the line our theme is light. But actually this is not a local state, this is just a global state which is fully shared across all our components. This is why here I can open popular users and this is completely another route. Now I want just to copy paste use atom and theme atom put here 
and just get our theme here. And now here what I want to do is just render the same theme and check if it is working. Now when we are jumping to our slash popular, we are still rendering our theme is light, which actually means this is exactly the state that we are share everywhere without usage of React context or providers. And what we want to do additionally, we want to change our state. This is by here, let's create a button and let's write for example toggle theme and inside let's create a non-click event which will change the state. So here we need toggle theme function and let's create it here on the top. So first of all here we want to get our new theme that we want to set and we are simply checking here if our theme equals light then we want to set it to dark, in other case we want to set it to light. And after this we can get a second parameter from our use atom and it is set theme, exactly like with use state. So here we are calling set theme and we simply provide inside our new theme. Let's check our new logic, as you can see our theme is light, now we are jumping inside users and here we have our new button, toggle theme, I am clicking here, our component is re-rendered and inside popular users it is also changed. Another thing that you might want to use, you want to create atoms based on your atoms, which actually means we are just talking here about computed properties. So here inside our app.js we have this theme atom. Now here let's say that we want to create a new atom and let's call it button color atom. And here we are calling atom function and inside as a first parameter we are getting a get function. Now here we can use get and for example theme atom and it will return the value of another state. And here we are getting our theme and we can simply check ok if it is light theme then here we want to use grey color, if it is dark theme then we want to use here white. Now everywhere we can additionally use this color atom, so let's jump for example inside our users component and here let's say that we want to color our button. For this we can get our button color from our state which is based on our theme state. So here we are just writing use atom and we are providing inside our button color atom. Now here on our button we can simply create our style and inside let's change a background and here background will be button color. Let's check if it's working. As you can see in browser inside users, now we have a gray button, I'm clicking on the button and now it is white, because actually we successfully created our new state which is based on our old state, and it is also fully global. Now let's have a look inside Jotai documentation. So first of all here we are creating atoms, you already know that. After this we are using them with use atom, this is totally fine. And we can create new atoms based on old atoms, like computed property, this is also fine. We can also combine them, but you won't use it that often. Most importantly your atoms must really be small, you really want to create a lot of them for every single property, you don't want to create a single big object with lots of properties, and then use this object like Redux inside all your components, it doesn't make any sense because all your components will be re-rendered every single time when you are changing the property. The main idea of this library is to make the amount of re-render smaller. And now here we are coming to the interesting section, we can use derived async atoms, which actually means you are creating atoms based on HTTP request, and this is something that I don't recommend you to do. Actually you can use atoms with async calls, it will work, but this is not the usage of this library when it shines. As you can see here inside our application, I am fetching this array of users from our backend. And actually for this I am using an additional library, which is called 10 stack React Query. And actually React Query library is amazing to work with API, fetch data, cache data, invalidate data, and this is exactly the library which works with our server state. Which means we are fetching something from the API and we want to sync this data with our state inside components. This is exactly what this library does. For example here in the single liner I am fetching data of our users from the API and I am storing them directly here inside users. 
What is more importantly, this data will be cached between different routes. For example, here I have popular users and here I also use use query. And now I can directly jump between these two routes and I will use the cache data from React Query. This is where actually these two libraries are working nicely together. We are using Jutai when we need a client state and global state and we're using React Query when we want to work with API and synchronize our API data with our React components. And actually, if you're interested to know what is React Query and how to use it correctly inside your React application, make sure to check this video also.